Adjusted Vectra DA, presented by Dr. Leonard H. Calabrese, Professor of Medicine at Cleveland Clinic Lerner College of Medicine and Vice Chair of the Department of Rheumatic and Immunologic Diseases. BMI is a very, very imperfect um, uh, uh, appraiser of uh, fat content. And what we're really uh, talking about, we want to know how much white fat there is, because this is a very hot area. We know that white fat is a metabolically and immunologically very active organ. Um, uh, it produces multiple inflammatory cytokines and adipokines um, that um, uh, uh, are important in the integrated uh, immune response. Um, and there is a very reliable marker known as leptin, uh, which is a, a pleomorphic cytokine that uh, actually uh, we're still uh, trying to uh, completely understand. Uh, but levels of leptin are, are uh, correlated uh, with percent body fat, and leptin has been in the vector DA, so uh, it provided an opportunity. Here's just a, um, uh, a general population uh, relationship uh, between um, leptin uh, and body fat. So you, you don't need an R value to see that uh, something is going on here. So uh, the key steps in created the, uh, creating this adjusted vectra, this new test that you will see, um, was to determine the relationship between um, uh, these uh, variables. And then, as statisticians do, um, in ways that uh, cough, uh, are uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, often elude me in my clinical mind, but uh, we understand the principles of adjusting for multiple variables, um, uh, uh, perform these uh, uh, statistical analysis, um, and then uh, tend to smooth out uh, the extremes. And that's exactly what adjustment uh, does in a functional uh, set. So in patients with uh, MBDA scores uh, that were at the extremes of age, in the extremes of obesity, um, it would tend to lower it. And people who were at the other end, it would tend to raise it. So that, I'll show you how this would look. So we have these two sets of, uh, of uh, large data sets uh, to which to build this. So here, looking at a cohort of healthy subjects, looking at the relationship between uh, BMI and leptin, uh, you see this relationship. And now looking at a population of 1,400 rheumatoids, uh, it's, the same, it's the same relationship. People at the extremes of body mass index tend to have high leptins, and people at the other end have low. So if we look at this, and we have uh, the leptin levels based on uh, divided into 20 epochs, and you can see that uh, over the extremes of body mass index, leptin may rise by uh, as many as uh, 15 or more vector points. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Now we look at gender and age. Um, age, on the other hand, rises a, a couple vector points per decade. So, you know, a, a 19-year-old and a 90-year-old, you're talking about a wide effect uh, and a significant effect over time. So here is the vector DA um, in its uh, traditional modes. So um, here you would have low, moderate, and high. And this is the adjusted vector DA. And so if you just focus on uh, this uh, diagonal, um, if you were low to begin with, 73% of them stay low. If you were moderate to begin with, 78% of those stay low. And if you were in the high category, 87% of them stay high. There's a slight adjustment, 12% um, to one category, um, uh, 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 a larger group going from low to moderate. Uh, nobody jumps two categories. But these are adjustments that I think now are meaningful. And I, I believe that the end product of this uh, will be a, a more precise test. This is a um, comparison of uh, multivariant analyses uh, of uh, many different composite scores. And so here we have uh, uh, a DAS a composite score, a DAS CRP, um, a univariant uh, CRP, MBDA. And these are taken, and the adjusted MBDA. And these were taken from the two cohorts that had uh, radiographic data. And the question is, how do they compare statistically, taking these type of variables in a model um, uh, to uh, express their relative uh, power uh, to predict 
um, radiographic progression. The statistic is an F statistic, which is uh, used for this type of uh, comparative analysis. And in this statistic, um, the higher the number, uh, the better uh, and more uh, strong the relationship uh, and the likelihood uh, that this represents um, uh, a, a uh, robust, uh, statistically um, uh, uh, potent observation. As you can see, here is the, uh, the MBDA classic form. Uh, and it was, uh, we've known this for the first several years of this test. It was the best predictor of radiographic progression uh, of all the markers that we have available to us in our practice. And here is the adjusted MBDA. And uh, uh, it, at a, a high level of, uh, of uh, 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 p-value, um, suggesting that uh, it, this has done exactly what uh, uh, it was intended to do. It is a, a better predictor. Uh, of what we uh, are trying to avoid, and that is a radiographic progression.